everyone. I'm going to just help explain how to use your fingers on the cello, especially the high E by request of Lewis. Hi Lewis. So I'm just going to pluck to make it easier so you can have a close-up view of my fingerboard. I don't have to worry about talking between my bow and my fingers. So first of all, left hand, make sure you're nice and relaxed. I tend to get pain in here if I'm tense, so just watch out for that. We want a C shape, fingers always curved. When they're on the string, you want to watch out that your fingers don't do this. That's going to be bad later on because you're putting a lot of pressure on these little knuckle joints here. So always nice and curved, this idea here, but there happens to be a cello in between. So a practice exercise, you could get a peg, clothes peg or nail clippers and just practice pressing down those with a nice finger or picking up something like sultanas in this sort of fashion. Uh, I don't have stickers, but you have stickers. You'll have one, two, three. First finger goes on this first sticker closer, closest to the pegs for your general hand position. So you'll have that there. When you add a finger, you add a letter number. So we'd be learning on the D string first. If you put your first finger on that first tape, you will make an E because D plus one, A, B, C, D, E. There it is, it should sound like that. D, E, it should sound like the start of happy birthday. As you can see, when you learn all the fingers, you can play happy birthday. D, E, Two actually goes in between the tapes and we don't use it for a while, but it's F. We are going to be using F sharp on the next tape. Three fingers. D, E, F natural, F sharp, and then pinky, it's the weakest finger, so you know, be patient with it. Try and still keep it curved. G, this is a high G. So you can kind of hear they're the same sounding note, but one's low and one's high. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The first note we've learned is high E, so this is low E, written in the one, two, three, third space on the music. High E is all the way above these, the stave, the five lines. It's all the way up here with two extra lines. What we do is we put our first finger down just like we would for that E, but on the A string, so that would make a B. Sorry, my cello fuzzies. That would be a B. We don't want a B, we want an E, so we need to slide past C sharp, next tape, past D, next tape, all the way down to where your hand can rest comfortably on the shoulder of the cello. And then if you keep these opposite each other just like a magnet and press down, that should be a high E. You can hear the octave, same note, one's low, one's high. If it's in tune, that was a sound down tune. There we go. If you've got it perfect, you'll get a harmonic. That's a violin E string. It's better when you bow it, but yeah, if it's not perfect, it doesn't ring. That's the high E that you see in at the ballet, in basically all the pieces that have fingers for the first, I think it's the first 10 songs. The only finger note you're playing is this high E. And you can just leave, shh, that's okay, I need to get that fixed. You just leave your hand here because it's nice. You're not having to hold it up. You will have to eventually get used to holding this position, but it's resting on the cello, it's nice and relaxed. I just hover my finger and then press it down and then leave it hovering directly above where I want it to go. Watch out for this sort of thing happening where they separate. That's where it won't sound right. Yeah, you listen for that. So in flapping around, for instance, you've got all of those open strings. On the second page, you start off with a high E. Then lift it off, same string, D to G. So you're going from high to low. E, A, D, G. That whole page is what you're doing, high to low every time. Until the last line where you're jumping around a bit. D, G, no, A, I haven't got the music, D, A, B. So that's where you kind of go down, back, and up. There you go. Uh, you feel free to try all your fingers on all the strings. It's the same on every string, just the, the note names change because you're changing strings. So on the A string, you've got A, B, C natural, C sharp, D. So for our purposes, A, B, C sharp, D. A, B, C, D. E. 
F sharp G if you want to be really fancy. It's a super high G up there. D string, we've got D, first take, E, next take, F sharp, next take, G. You'll see in the music when you get up to this that each note is either the next line or the next space right next to each other. So if D is the middle line, E is the next space, F sharp is the next line, and G is the next space. So it goes line, space, line, space, line, space, line, space, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, it just keeps going. I'll do the other two strings as well. So G string, we've got G, first finger, first tape, A, that's a low A. In music, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We just keep coming back to G, uh, A, after the G. We've got low A. B, three fingers. Two would be B flat. So all these second fingers are sort of black notes on the piano. Uh, that's a bit complicated, but yeah. B and C. And then C string, we've got C, D, E, F. You'll notice the thicker the string, it's a little harder to press those fingers down and to keep that nice curved shape. But it is possible, you just you can see I my wrist moves up and my elbow moves up a little bit. Obviously you don't want this, something that's quite natural and relaxed. So you want to make sure your shoulder's not doing anything uncomfortable, but that's something I am working on all the time. You'll notice your shoulder probably tries to help you do things in both your arms and it doesn't need to. It's all coming from sort of your elbow downwards. So watch out for that relaxation. Anyway, I hope that helps. So high E, slide all the way down so you hit the shoulder. Magnet fingers, press it down on the pad of your finger. You will get, I don't know if you can see, you will get little lines across your finger. That's normal. You will develop calluses just like if you play guitar, you get thicker skin. And it, it usually takes about two weeks if you're practicing a few times a week. A couple weeks and you'll have nice thick calluses, which is helpful. Anyway, I hope that is helpful for you. Email me any questions, that's totally fine. I thought I'd just explain all of it and you can take what you want. You don't have to try and do all the fingers. I just, you know you can now if you want to, because you've got the time. <laughs> all right, I look forward to seeing you all in class eventually.